who have been following my series, The Depths of DS9, are well attuned to the fact that Star Trek has seen better centuries. Ever since Voyager left airwaves in the early aughts, it seems Star Trek has been characterized by one desperate attempt to glom onto the zeitgeist of the microsecond after another, never settling down long enough to actually say something in the interim. Enterprise had barely settled in a season four when it was unceremoniously shit-canned, and the Abrams reboot was a half-second honeymoon before we all realized it was built on a foundation of creative fucking sand. Two sequels later, we're all wondering if there will ever be another film in that franchise, well, Star Trek Discovery is what would happen if Reddit had a writer's room. But hearken! Materializing in the pockmarked horizon, and it all rests on the softly shorn skull of Picard! But while Trekkies tossed each other off of this obvious attempt to fan service the franchise into fucking relevance again, I advised a double dose of caution, and in retrospect... Maybe I should have prescribed a fucking triple. As the more plot details emerge here, the more I bend over backwards in a full-body fucking cringe. Picard depicts a federation embroiled in a galactic refugee crisis, spurring Picard and presumably Patrick Stewart to take a dim view of the Federation's refusal to intervene thanks to some pesky bullshit called the Prime Fucking Directive. Never mind the question of how you suffer a housing shortage in a Federation with thousands of fucking planets. Never mind the refugees are Romulan, the closest thing to a mustache-twirling, space snidely whiplash Star Trek fucking has. Never mind they made a motherfucking clone of the cue ball in question, not only killing goddamn Data, but worst of all, giving Tom Hardy a career in the process. Square peg, meet round hole, awkward inapplicable analogies getting shoved in whether we like it or not. Being interviewed for Variety, Stewart says, the new show was me responding to the world of Brexit and Trump and feeling, why hasn't the Federation changed? Why hasn't Starfleet changed? Maybe they're not as reliable and trustworthy as we all thought. <sighs> Granted, he might have misspoke or misappropriated. Sir Patrick as far from the fucking wordsmith Picard is in the drumhead, as proven by the fact that he was pie-faced by James fucking Gordon, of all people, when he rightly criticized the theoretical comedian for looming awkwardly behind him, blocking both Picard and the peasantry from the life-giving light of the fucking sun. His earth-shattering insult, you inquire? <clears throat> you, sir, have a big belly. From where I was sitting, I can see your belly. And uh, that was right over there at the back of the room. These people down here. Sorry, I'm waiting for the punchline. Go on. No, seriously, go on. Okay. No, um, go on. You can see my belly, and we can all see you dying right now. Let's go for it. Here we go. If you fancy the Jonas Brothers... Cover your belly. Jesus, Percival Christ! I get that you're older than the Democratic debates and your insult cash ain't exactly overflowing with fresh material, but fuck, Don Rickles was over a decade your senior and he died a stone-cold fucking savage. God, you must be very familiar with my work. Every night, I, Every go, to, night. I go to bed and I think of your work. <laughs> no, I really, I... <laughs> She's a million laughs this <laughs> You're gonna kill her. Well, I did to go to an agriculture school. You're not a Jew. No, sir. You know, but a Jew don't farm. Why do you say that, though? Uh, I don't know anybody that has a horse and a, <laughs> watches corn grow and all that. I know uh, guys that own that land. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. You can say it. <laughs> More to the point, Patrick, you are being crowded. By Corden, the only man on earth who could fuck up the punchline on a knock-knock joke, a British black hole from which no humor can conceivably escape. I ain't saying she a gold nigga. She ain't messing with no broke, broke. A bottomless wellspring of half-retarded roast fuel. He hangs a curveball, center fucking plate. And you bumble fuck about his belly? Granted, that was back when he was a legitimately fat fuck. The man's ass was in daylight savings time. Nowadays, he's benzo to the baseboard, slim the fuck down, and one of the richest men on the planet. At least if you go per square inch. Point being, let us not confuse Patrick Stewart with a patriarch of class he so often portrays on fucking film. Dude's a died in the dog shit lefty, and this ain't his first brush with his own boundless stupidity. At the 1999 Oscars, 
He went ahead and sided with communists against Lifetime Achievement recipient Elia Kazan, who testified against them in the fucking 40s. But I, uh, I am violently opposed to everything that was done by the Un-American Activities Committee, and uh, I feel sad about his testimony. A matter of mere political bias, you say? Well, it would be if it wasn't the year 1990-fucking-nine, well the fuck into the KGB archives opening and confirming that Elia Kazan had been A1 fucking right in alleging the Hollywood communists were in fact funded by fucking Soviets. Pat's either oblivious or openly fucking pinko. Take your pick. Most gallingly of all, this horseshit comes hot on the heels of Ricky Gervais essentially embodying the internal monologue of the entire movie-going audience of America by browbeating these demi dolts for preaching to the public about politics and backing up the effort with their peerless credentials of playing pretend for a living. Well, you say you're woke, but the companies you work for, I mean, unbelievable. Apple, Amazon, Disney. If ISIS started a streaming service, you'd call your agent, wouldn't you? So, if you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. Now, in fairness, the Variety interview in question predates not only the Golden Globes in question, but the Boris Johnson BTFO-a-thon from late last year. If there's any hope to be had here for the Star Trek faithful, it's that Patrick appears to suggest that interjecting Trump and Brexit into this bullshit was merely his interpretation and an entirely internalized one thereby. The problem, even if Patrick Stewart's preachifying is ultimately internal or immaterial, and judging from the plot details it doesn't seem it is, it'd still be a cynical nostalgia wank contributing precisely nothing but further footprints on past so well-worn Whoopi could use them as a fucking face. Vote with your wallet and don't be fooled. The Federation may not believe in Latinum, but Paramount Studios sure as shit does. I'm Razor Fist. Steady as she blows, number one. So in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. No! Shut up! I know he's your friend, but I don't care. No! You had to make your own way here in your own plane, didn't you? Right, but... You broke your little ships.